What's up everybody and welcome back to another Code Music Chill Session here at Jachelle Tech TV where we're going to be coding, listening to music and chilling. So let's get to work. So just a quick recap, I've been working on improving and refreshing my skills and some fundamental topics and right now I've pretty much been hanging out at MDN's web docs and the front end web developer course and honestly I highly recommend it. It's awesome, detailed, and you can learn a lot even if you already have experience in the industry. So I've just completed the CSS building blocks which is part of the CSS module and at the end there's three different assessments and in this video I'll be completing the first one with this first project it's to create a business card gamer card or social media profile and the final design is at the very bottom so it's whatever you want it to be business card social profile it could be any one of those that should be the end result the project brief you've been provided with some raw HTML and an image and need to write the necessary CSS to style this into a nifty little online business card which can perhaps double as a gamer card or a social profile. So the starting point to get the assessment started, um, they provide the HTML for the exercise, the image file and the CSS. So I'm gonna head over to the repo and grab their HTML. And then I'm going to create an HTML file, index.html. And then I'm gonna grab the CSS file that they've provided. And then create a style.css. And I already have my own image for this because I prefer to <laughs> use my own photo for a business card or something. Um, and I'm gonna just customize it, basically put my own name on there. Also, they have a set of requirements that they include in each project. So it's in the project brief, they talk about everything that you need to include in the project, just to make sure you have an understanding of everything you've learned in the course for that section. And what I typically do is I take all the requirements out. I put them into a checklist so that I can make sure that I'm hitting all the requirements and just making sure I'm not leaving anything out. So it's just easier for me to be able to click boxes and check boxes and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the index.html file. And as you can see, it's just text right now. On the checklist, it says create a new file in the same directory as your HTML and image files. And I've already done that. So next is to link the CSS to the HTML file via the link element. So I'm gonna go into the index.html and put in the CSS. It's under style. All right, so we are working with something here. So we're now now it has a gray background because the CSS is applied now and the font is changed as well. So I've linked the CSS. Now the next thing I wanna do is just put in my name for the business card and then add my own image. So I have it under the an images directory and my name, save, perfect. <laughs> Okay, that's better. And then I'm also, I'm also gonna change the email from Chris to Jachelle. Okay, now we can get started. <laughs> so one thing I wanna point out on the checklist is it has beware there are two errors in the provided rule sets. Using any technique that you know, track these down and fix them before moving on. So if we go to the CSS, you'll notice that there's errors in there. But that's basically because we have to put these properties and values and, and connect them with the correct elements and correct selectors. So that comes into the next checklist. The first rule, the first two rule sets in the CSS resource file are yours for free. Yeah, free. 
After you finish rejoicing at your good fortune, copy and paste them into the top of your new CSS file. Use them as a test to make sure your CSS is properly applied to your HTML. It says above the two rules, add a CSS comment with some text inside it to indicate that this is a set of general styles for the overall page. And it looks like they've already done that. So I'm going to check that off. And it says also add three more comments at the bottom of the CSS file to indicate styles specific to the setup of the card container. And I'm just gonna skip that for right now. Next, we'd like you to look at the four selectors and calculate the specificity for each one. Write these down somewhere where they can be found later on, such as in a comment at the top of your CSS. And I've calculated the specificity. This is basically just to get an understanding of specificity. As far as classes and elements, just under just understanding, you know, why something wouldn't be working or why the CSS would apply one thing over another. So I was able to I was able to calculate that. So just to pull up the MDN article, essentially a value and points is awarded to different types of selectors and adding these up helps give you the weight of a selector. So the amount of the amount of specificity a selector has is measured using four different values or components. So for every element selector, you'll put a one in the ones column for every selector, attribute selector, pseudo class, put um, put that in the tens column. So that's how you're able to add the weight of, or it's a good way to visualize the weight of specificities. And it's good to have an understanding of that because it helps you troubleshoot CSS better. But also a good thing to note is that it's only approximate because every selector has its own level of specificity that can't be overwritten. Um, for example, a million class selectors combined would not be able to overwrite the rules of one ID selector. So this is a good article on that if you want to just understand more about troubleshooting CSS as far as weight is concerned. So I'm going to go ahead and check that off. We've done that. Now it's time to put the right selector on the right rule set. You've got four pairs of selectors and rule sets to match in your CSS resources. Do this now and add them to your CSS file. You need to give the main card container affixed with height, solid background color, border and border radius and rounded corners amongst other things. So I'm looking for the main card container, which is here and affixed with height, solid background. Looks like this is going to be this first set of properties and values here. So I'm going to go ahead and move that into that. What I'd like to do is move it up above. I don't know, it just looks better if it's first since it's the main one. So I'm done with that. Give the header a background gradient that goes from darker to lighter plus rounded corners that fit in with the rounded corners set on the main card container. So it looks like this one and I'm gonna move that up. And so a background gradient that goes from darker to lighter. It's darker to lighter, right? Yeah, because this this one over here, yeah, that's lighter because I'm looking at the uh, alpha channel. And just to pull up my notes here on Google Docs, there's three different values in RGB values, and this is a color function. But when you're working with RGBA values, the A, um, it works in exactly the same way as RGB colors, and so you can use any RGB values but that fourth value represents the alpha channel of the color which controls the opacity and only makes the color you're specifying opaque so if i wanted to know it you know which one is lighter or darker here in the css i can look at that fourth number and in, v in vs code what i love about it is if you look here you can see that the opacity is at the very bottom at the lighter part and then over here it kind of darkens up a little bit. So it goes up because if I were to push that all the way up, it would have a darker opacity and you can kind of see the transparency there at the bottom. So that's how I know that that goes from darker to lighter. And that's why I love VS Code because it shows you so much good stuff. So I'm gonna move this little chunk up there at the header. And now that's checked off. Now give the footer a background gradient that goes from lighter to darker plus rounded corners that fit in with the rounded corners set on the main card container. And that's pretty easy because it's like not many left. Okay. And I'm going to move that up and bring it in. 
No, I'll keep footer as the last one. All right, and so the last one is to, I'm gonna check that off, float the image to the right so that it sticks to the right-hand side of the main business card contents and give it a max height of 100%, a clever trick that ensures that it will grow shrink to stay the same height as this parent container regardless of what height it becomes. And since it's the very last one, I'm pretty sure that that's it. And I'm gonna move MDN's lovely comment. Okay, like they said in the instructions, there are two errors in the rule sets. Use any technique to track these down. I can already see the errors. Can you spot the errors? I see that color is spelled incorrectly, which it's spelled right in some cases, but CSS goes by C-O-L-O-R. Otherwise, it's not gonna recognize that in the spelling. And then we can see here, the max height doesn't have a lovely little semicolon. Now the CSS should be good to go. And if I click, if I do command S, now we're getting somewhere. Just go back over to the checklist and I'm gonna go ahead and check off finding the errors and then check off all the other checks that I've already done. So they also want us to add three more comments at the bottom of the CSS file to indicate style specific to the setup of the card container. So one is style specific to the header and footer. Style specific to the main business card content. And then So I've done that. So now with the new rule set, write a rule set that targets the write a rule set that targets both the card header and card footer, giving them both a computed total height of 50 pixels, including a content height of 30 pixels and padding of 10 pixels on all sides, but express it in M's. Wow. That is a mouthful. Okay, so that style should target both the header and footer. And I'm gonna add the card class in front of that. So it wants them to have a computed total height of 50. And that's gonna include a content height of 30 and padding of 10 and express it in M's. So the size of EMs look at the parent to get the size, to compute the size. So if I inspect the CSS, and look at the parent, which is card, I can actually get the font size. Now, because the card class doesn't have a font size, doesn't have a font size assigned to it, it's, it's going to take, it's going to inherit the font size of its parent. Also, there's an article on MDN that talks about EM. So the font size is of the parent in the case of typographical properties like font size and font size of the element itself in the case of other properties like width. So that's a good article if you wanna look more into length units on MDN. So we can see here the font size on the HTML element is 10. So if I want to give them a content height of 30, then in EMs, that would be three because three times 10 is 30. So I'm gonna give it a height, the header footer height of three Ms. That's 30, save it, you see that changing. So if I now go to header, if I go to the header and go to the computed tab in the inspection, you can see that the content has a height of 30. And I can do the same thing with the footer. Click on the footer and I see 30. So now it'll be very easy to go in and add a padding of one because one time 10 is 10. <laughs> so if I save that, 
go to header, now 30 and 10. And also you can scroll down and see the different filters. So you see under layout, there's a height of 30 pixels and padding of 10. So go back here to the checklist. So we can now check off content height of 30, padding of 10. The next checklist, the default margin applied to H2 and P elements by the browser will interfere with our design. So write a rule that targets all these elements and set their margin to zero. So in the CSS, I'll write a new rule for the card H2 and P. And we need to set a margin to zero. Go ahead and save it. Okay. So the next checklist item to stop the image from spilling out of the main business card content, the article element, we need to give it a specific height. So set the article's height to 120 pixels, but expressed in EMs. So we're gonna come over to the CSS, target the card class again, and we're gonna target article. So the checklist asks for a height of 120 pixels. So that's gonna be 12 EMs, cause again, the font size is 10. And 10 times 12 is 120. Save it. And that definitely helps that a lot. <laughs> Go ahead and check that off. Also give it a background color of semi-transparent black resulting in a slightly darker shade that lets the background red color shine through a bit too. So they want a semi-transparent black background. So I'm gonna add a background color and add the RGB function, black, and then semi-transparent 0.3. Yeah, that definitely helps the red shine through a lot. <laughs> awesome. So go ahead and check that out. Check that off, not out. <laughs> So now we're gonna write a rule set that gives the H2 an effective font size of 20 pixels, but expressed in M's. So card H2 font size two M's. So that's the 20 pixels. So go ahead and save it. So now that's 20. If I inspect that, And go to the H2, go down to text. You can see the font size is 20, two M's, two EMs. And then add an appropriate line height to place it in the center of the header's content box. Recall from earlier that the content box height should be 30. This gives you all the numbers you need to calculate the line height. So again, with EMs, it goes by the parent. So now that we have a font size here, the line height is gonna go, the line height will be calculated according to the 20 pixels. So I'm gonna give it a line height of 1.5. And next is to add an appropriate line height to place it in the center of the header's content box. Recall from earlier that the content box height should be 30 pixels. This gives you all the numbers you need to calculate the line height. So with the line height for the H2, we have a font size of two EMs. So I'm gonna add a line height property. With the line height, it works on the font size. So I'm gonna give it a line height of 1.5 and since the font size is 20 pixels, with the line height being 1.5, it's gonna give it a line height of 30 pixels. Since the content height is 30, then I'll make the line height 30 as well. So if I go ahead and save this,
if I inspect the header and go down to text, you can see that the line height is 30 pixels. So that aligns with the height of 30 pixels. So I'm gonna check off that check. And then next we need to write a rule set that gives the P inside the footer an effective font size of 15 pixels, but, ex but expressed in EMs. So I'm gonna target the card class and then the footer P and give it a font size. Oops, they want a font size of 15. So that's one, that's 1 1.5 M's. And I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And that fixes the footer font size. And then they also want an appropriate line height for the footer. So to give the footer also a line height of 30, I'm gonna make the footer line height two. Because again, the font size is 15 pixels and 15 times two is 30. So that puts it right at the center of the content here. And you can also inspect it again if you would like to see behind the scenes of what's going on under the hood. If you click on the footer, you can see that the line height here is 30. And also, if you just use numbers for the line height, that's what you call a unitless value. You don't have to add a unit to the line height. When you use a unitless value, what that's saying is, I wanna give it a line height of 1.5 times the size of whatever the font size is. And actually, I read on MDN that it's actually better, it looks better if you just, it's just, e well, it's easier to manage that way, when you use M's and rims versus pixels, everything is just easier to manage. So the article on MDN about line height, the line height property sets the height of each line of text. And it can also take a unitless value, which acts as a multiplier and is generally considered the best option. But body text generally looks nicer and is easier to read when the lines are spaced apart. And the recommended line height is around 1.5 to two double space. So that's just a little bit about the line height property when it comes to using M's and without using a unit on that value. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and check those boxes cause we're done with the line heights and font sizes on those. And as a last little touch, give the paragraph inside the article an appropriate padding value so that it's left edges line up with the H2 and footer paragraph and set its color to be fairly light so it's easy to read. So I'm gonna come back over to the layout and again, target the card class and then the article paragraphs. Give it a padding of one M because I feel that <laughs> that is an appropriate size. So I'll go ahead and save it. So it's really your discretion. I think that looks good. And actually it's pretty pixel perfect or pretty close to pixel perfect um, as the actual final design on MDN site. So it look, you know, it pretty much lines up with the name up there. So it was that the left edge is line, the left edge lines up with the H2 and footer. So that's what we wanted there. And then set its color to be fairly light so it's easy to read. I'm gonna give it a color of light gray. So that's pretty easy to read. And also on the checklist, if you were wondering why I put the card class on the front of each one, MDN actually recommended to include the card at the start of the selector chain and all of your rules so that these rules wouldn't interfere with the styling of any other elements if the business card were to be put on a page with a load of other content. So let's say if you were working on a project and you were only like, let's just say this was like a business card component or something, 
and there were other footers and articles or you know h2s um, by targeting card you won't interfere with anyone else's code so if we take a look here we can see that the the design other than the photo of course and the name the design matches up with MDN's final design. All right, so that's it for today's Code Music Chill session. I had fun. Thank you everybody for stopping by and hanging out in the live chat. And let me know what you think about the MDN course. Um, I think it's awesome and I'm gonna keep doing it. So that's it for this video and see you in the next one.